yeah, if you give a database to someone, assume it's going to be passed around and, you know, so, unless you don't want it to, you, you know, tell the person, please don't use this data unless you contact me first. I had to finally tell that to about a couple of different databases. Um, and if your database is available online and the documentation is in a separate file, like say a t uh, text file, README, um, if you're putting the data up there, I would highly recommend to turn it into a zip file so that when you download the actual database, you automatically get the, the metadata database, the README file. Just keep it together. <coughs> Um, so, like this is just an example of an access database, and you want a description of the different fields. If people like to know what the field type is, you know, auto number, long integer, text. Um, it's also helpful to know the range of values. Um, and you would describe like the relationships here. Here, there's a relationship between ID and uh, station ID. It's just no data. Um, metadata. Metadata is uh, the protocol for GIS, so which users make note of so certain information, um, such as like the projection, abstract, um, uh, various stuff, and it can come in HTML and X HTML and XML and TXT. I've seen. I've never seen CFEF file. Um, and these are the uh, suggestions putting, put out by the metadata gods. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mandatory elements, of course, are the title, reference date, uh, data set language. Um, that could be the, maybe the type of data that it is, I believe. Um, topic or category, that kind of helps with uh, keywords and like searching for different types of uh, data. And abstract, and of course your contact and like the last time it was used or modified. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can have in metadata. It can, it can take up your whole time if you're like really super thorough. But that's the mandatory uh, elements. And this is an example of uh, metadata uh, on the internet. And I frequently get, get questions, you know, okay, I see this metadata here, but how do I actually get the metadata? And the trick is to do a, a right click on it and put save as, and then you just make sure that when you save it, it's all files and you have the right extension on there. You can also do that for like text files. Um, this is a, a, a example of the uh, Pleistocene Glacier. You see you have a metadata tab up there in our GIS, and it has in the metadata, you just have your description, your keywords. Um, your abstract, and then your spatial information, and your coordinates. And then you have information on, those are the columns in the database, your attributes would be the columns. And a lot of this is automatically generated too. Um, this is an example of uh, some data from the Fish and Wildlife Service. And they, they did it right here, but some people don't. Um, one thing I thought was funny is that it is, it's only for educational use. So I bet that people do download this data and actually use it for research. Um, some people, they won't put that in uh, the metadata file if there is a metadata file. So it's really important to look around on the website and look for any uh, you know, constraints like that on the data. Because, yeah, sometimes it won't come with it. Uh, failing to define no values. Um, without a definition, the user doesn't know whether the value is null or not. Uh, the urinalysis without uh, defining null values can lead to just like <coughs> off results. And so the program automatically generate a zero where there is no data, which I've been burned with. And this is an example. Um, this was uh, uh, a database. Uh, I had just a database in Excel. Um, it's a DBF, and this file here doesn't have any zeros in it. And I pulled it into ArcGIS, and you know, I was playing around doing some stuff, and then I exported it from ArcGIS, and it went and put zeros in the places where I didn't have any data. So, not cool. Because then you try to go and run, run an analysis, and the original file, I had true um, null values, blank empty values, but then the one that I exported from ArcGIS, 
it went and put zeros in there, so it ran them in the analysis and totally changed my results. I was burned on this when I was calculating the distance for a moose hunter. And if you have a whole bunch of values that have zero, you know, obviously it's just the wrong what you get. So that's one important thing. Um, this can be avoided. Programs can automatically generate no values. Um, no values in ArcGIS. You have the option to uh, click, check the box over there. If you check it, it allows no values. Uncheck um, will not allow no values. So automatically right there it forces you to deal with them. Um, in Access, uh, in a table, when you go into the design view of the table, you can, there's a required um, uh, option that you can uh, check. So, you know, what you would do is you would click on any one of these field names and it drops down here and gives you general information about that uh, field name and you can choose um, things there. You can also, like, duplicates, like if you want something that you know is going to be a unique ID and you don't want it to have duplicates, then you can set it there to not have duplicates and it'll give you an error message. So what's the difference <coughs> in required yes and allow zero length no? Required yes? See the one that's highlighted yeah. says required and the second is yes. Yeah. And then the next one is allow zero length and it says no. So um, allow zero length, that could be... Um, I'm not sure which field this is. Okay. But I'd have to look into it. I'm not exactly sure what that means. But yeah. Probably I mean yeah. just with the length can be as low as zero. Right? Just normally I No, I mean it says that lead should not be zero. Oh, okay. So but no, yeah, uh, that's from just excess Google. That's a good observation on how that I haven't played with that. Well, it says that's the company name, so that if you had anything entered as a company name, it would work with the word zero, right? Mm hmm But, um, you know, can you have it be required no and allow a link with zero no? I'm not sure what that, you know, I don't think it would give you an error, error message. Yeah. But it's something I would look up in the book. Um, also, another way to avoid no values, um, like say you have a numerical value, um, this here says that it cannot be equal to zero, so you have to have uh, something you know negative or positive entered there. If it uh, if you enter a zero, it'll give you trouble. And no values they can cause issues like when you're doing calculations. If something is no, you know it will return will this uh, return no information. Um, the next one is the lack or poor identity of columns. Each table should have its unique ID. This allows the ability to go back and retrieve data that was not kept when you join tables. Because I've done joins before where it's, I didn't include, say, like fire size, and it's like, well, I really kind of did want to, um, I did want to include that in my analysis, and I can say, well, yeah, I kept my unique fire ID, so I can easily pull it in. Um, and uh, it's. It, if uh, possible, one should be able to see a pattern that differentiates the rows. So like I kind of said before, making sense when creating the unique primary ID. And like here's an example, you know, you have the source ID and unique ID of one through six, and well, is there really a difference between the two lightning? Well, there might be, but you kind of have to state it, you know. And then I think it would be better for your source ID is to maybe use the, <coughs> the letters there instead of just some random numbers that you put in there. 